Greetings everyone. In this continuation video, we're going to look at a little bit about products, users, groups, and subscriptions and how they relate to Azure API management. So before we jump into the portal, let's just kind of take a look at, at some kind of broad um, perspective on these components in general. So first off, we, we, we looked at in the last video that API has one or more operations within it. You can actually create the shell uh, without any operations. For an API. <clears throat> then the next way you want to look at it is we can take APIs and then group those together in products, right, as a collection of one or more APIs. And a product can be, uh, can one product can contain the same API as another product. So um, they're just ways to group those um, particular APIs uh, together, right, in some way, shape, or fashion. Now when we take products, let's take a look at some users and groups. So users, they might be a little bit of a, a false term in this context. A user is essentially anyone who's going to access the developer portal. It has nothing to do with accessing the APIs themselves. It's really about accessing the developer portal. And you can actually um, collect those users together in groups, right? Uh, and these don't necessarily have to be groups for your organization. Uh, a good example is you may have a group that's one of your external partner companies and their developers, a group of four or five of their developers might be in that group. Um, but users can exist by themselves. They don't have to be a part of a group. Um, and users, uh, a group can contain zero or more users. So you can create an empty group that you're not, you're not using. In a later video, I'll actually show you how to use Active Directory to create groups, to use your Active Directory groups in uh, a, a API management. So we've looked at products and APIs. Now we've looked at users and groups. Let's tie those together and see that with a product, you can assign um, zero or more groups to a product. right? So that means via the users in that group, if the, you know, the group has users in it, those users can be assigned to a product, right? So a product can be assigned to zero or more groups. And that's a great way to um, give access to those APIs via the portal, right? Now we'll, we'll link all this together, right? That's just portal only. Now we're gonna be talking about actually implementing the APIs with subscriptions and where does subscriptions fit in? This is where the keys are. Now, if you look at a subscription by itself, a subscription can be scoped to one of three things. We can be scoped to all the APIs altogether. We can be scoped to a single API, or we can be scoped to a single product. And you know a product is made up of APIs, right? Now, also, with that subscription, this subscription can be secured to a single user. So one user can have that subscription that accesses all APIs or a one product, right? Like we just said. These are just linkages between those those things. Now a subscription can contain, as you saw, it can contain uh, one or uh, one group or potentially more groups. So if it's assigned to a group, uh, excuse me, a product, then the groups that are part of that product immediately has access by that subscription. So it's a great way to have uh, it, in some ways, it's a little confusing, but it, is, it gives you a great amount of flexibility. Some of these subscriptions options are fairly new, uh, newly introduced in the last uh, year or so, I believe, um, before it was a little more strict. Uh, but, but now it's, this is the kind of what we're looking at it from a whole. I know it's a little confusing, so let's drop back into the portal and see where this takes us. Right, so I'm going to pull up the portal, and we're going to create some examples of these uh, and we'll sign in with Postman like we did uh, earlier in the other demo. Uh, so just going through here, the first thing we've already looked at the APIs. So now let's let's create a product, right? So we have um, uh, that manual API. So let's go ahead and create a new product for that. Example product. Um, you obviously want to be more descriptive. Now, if you don't publish it, it will not show up in the developer portal, so we're not going to go ahead and, and, and use that yet from a published perspective, but we'll uh, do that. Now, in the portal, too, users have the ability to request uh, part of that subscription or be part of that product, and, and we would want that to, to happen if we wanted to do that. 
And again, as I mentioned before, the, um, a product is a collection of one or more APIs. You see all the APIs we have here. We're going to make it that manual product, right? We have. Um, that's all I'm going to put for now. Uh, I'll leave it unpublished. Uh, well, let's go ahead and make it public. There's no reason not to. And this is going to be our manual API. So that was the product that we saw. And just a real quick house cleaning. I'm going to go back and, and <clears throat> remove the product that was set. See right here on the unlimited. Let's remove that. So we only have example product on that manual now. Okay. So now, technically, if we tried to hit the manual with Postman, uh, like before, I think if we still have it in our history here, so if we try to use these same keys, this won't work for us uh, because we don't have, that's that's not ours, and that's not associated with this particular uh, call, right? So um, how do we get all that put in place, right? So, you know, one thing I mentioned before is, is we have products. We'll get to subscriptions in a minute. Um, but let's go back and look at the users and groups. With users, there's a couple of ways, and we'll look at the Active Directory version of this later, but um, a couple of ways. You can add or invite. An add is simply going to create somebody, and, and they're not going to have to uh, um, confirm it, essentially. So if you invite somebody, they're going to get an email. Uh, in fact, let's do, let's do the invite first, and um, I'm going to do that to... We'll give them access there. We'll send the invite, and uh, we'll go look at that in a moment, right? Uh, let's go ahead and add in a fake, somebody fake. So we did an add. Um, we're just going to do bogus user at somewhere.com. Give them a password of something really hard that I'll totally remember. Now, obviously, we wouldn't want to do these manually for every user all the time. That immediately gives them access, right? Uh, and, and now you see this thing called groups that we have over here. And when you immediately add somebody, they're automatically put into the groups. Uh, administrator, uh, the administrator's group is, in fact, let's go to groups. The administrator, all of these groups are actually managed by Azure uh, API management. So you can't go in and add members uh, to any one of these, including it's just at automatic. So that's where our groups come in, right? And, so in groups, let's go ahead and come to groups, and we're going to create an example group. Uh, now, in some ways, this could be one of your partner organizations, right? Uh, you know, I'm going to go ahead and just do a couple of them. A example group, and um, I'm going to, you know, just create this super simple. Um, but let's also go ahead and create one for maybe our uh, um, uh, external um, partner company. Some kind of external partner company that we've, we're working with, right? And then we're going to put in inside of that um, external partner company, we're going to go and add our new user, bogus user, and our Brad the coder, right? As in there. So now they're listed in here as in that group, right? Uh, nothing, nothing spectacular. The group's there. That's great. We're wonderful. Okay, so now what we can do is we saw on the diagram that, um, in fact, let's pop it back up, that groups connect to users, right, uh, to products, excuse me. So we've established our group and we've got somebody in it. Now let's link that to products. So under products, we're going to go find our example product. And here's under access control, we're going to go ahead and remove admins because uh, they don't need access to that group, but we're going to add that example group that we had created, or excuse me, the partner company, right? Partner companies now in there, they have access to this product, right? This is a shortcut to add subscriptions, and we'll get to here in a minute, but we're going to go to subscriptions first so you kind of look at what subscriptions is. This is just kind of a short circuit way to create those. So if we go back out, if you remember now, we've got <clears throat> our user, we've got group, and we've got um, product associated with the group. And now we want to link that. And product is now associated with the API, but we don't have any subscription keys to use yet. So let's go ahead and create a subscription for that, um, that new product, right? The administrator gets one by default. And we're going to go ahead and remove his because we removed his access on the example product. So we'll keep it simple and clean. Um, admins don't need access to everything. And that's not really full admin, if you if you will. So this is going to be for our external 
partner co subscription. Oh, um, ah, that's I know. Sorry. You would think that uh, they would have it the other way around, like every other screen. Unfortunately, here's what I was mentioning before. You can either set it very broad with all users, or you can set it for a single API. Excuse me, all APIs, or a single API, or a single product. So if you see API, you can select from the APIs, or if you select from product, you're going to select product. Now we're going to select product because that was what our goal was. Now, if you wanted to even be further specific and say only a one user can use that, you could even go down into here and say bogus users are the only one that can use this subscription, right? Uh, and tie that all together. But for now, we're going to leave it anybody who's who's that. It's going to give us a new key. Now, if we go here and grab our key, if we go back to Postman and paste in our key, we should now successfully be able to access the API. And there we are. So I hope you found that video of, of going through uh, subscriptions, users, um, the groups, products. Hopefully that made sense. Um, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments uh, or let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. And I believe we're going to look at Active Directory user authentication in the next video.